congratulations. Yes. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Go yes, tell the bees that I am gone. I am gone, yes. Uh, people have been asking me ever since I released that title, who's going to die? Because they say, well, obviously, somebody's gone, they're dying. You know, is it Jamie? To which I replied, no, it's not Jamie. Oh, thank God. But you never say Claire. What happens to Claire? No, I never said Claire. Well, I never said she wouldn't die, did I? But a lot of things happen to her in this book, uh, as well as to Jamie. Oh my God! Does she make it? I, I feel like who? Who, who else who, could? Die? Yes, who lives? Who dies? Uh, Brianna Rodgers. Well, let me see. How many people are in this book? Something like three hundred and sixty-eight at the last count. There's a lot of choices. But I, all Sam cares about is mm -hmm. that this you feel hard to dramatize with 360 characters. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I've got a little, lot of room. I mean, so you've been writing this one for, for a while. It's been well anticipated. Mm, yes, absolutely. I started writing it well soon after Outlander started because I would bring my computer on set and write in between things mm. and so forth. So it was uh, kind of a joint fertilization, you might say. But uh, a lot of people actually want to know about that, so the, the jointness of the books and the shows and so forth, mm -hmm. and how do we work together to, yep. uh, to make either one, is there feedback and so forth. And you know, uh, possibly, luckily, uh, none of the show people tell me anything about my books. <laughs> <laughs> we would not dare. <laughs> well, I always listen when people tell me things. What I do about it is something else uh, sometimes. They're, well, they're interesting because they kind of run beside each other and obviously, mm -hmm. You know, we are a dramatization, so there are going to be differences. But we also try and always try and keep as much of yeah. your books in the show as mm -hmm. well. And yeah, I appreciate that deeply. Yeah. But I always yeah. find it interesting that people ask you if you now kind of base it off, for instance, Sam and Katrina and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and I've always said you're well ahead of us, although we are catching up. <laughs> I mean, we are catching up, people. We could make it. Because you're only doing 10. I mean, we could easily do 10 series, right? Uh, well, yes, but you can't do 10 series faster than I can write no, to the 10th true. book. Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone is, thank God, finished. Uh, it took, uh, not quite forever, but a number of years. And as my husband says, to a writer, finished is a relative term. Yeah. Yeah, and you know this is true of, uh, of TV shows, too. Yeah. Because while I've been signing all of these tip sheets and so forth, I've been watching Outlander dailies and episodes and revised episodes and revised episodes. Mm. So uh, when did you stop filming? A few months ago? We stopped filming in June, and we're mm. still in post-production. So, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I think it surprises people often how long the process takes. We're actually in Outlander all year long because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll start prepping fairly soon, early, early prep on season seven. We're already in the season seven writer's room. And once again, we always kind of overlap seasons. So mm -hmm. it's just, for some of us, it's just year round. And, and Sam, for instance, I think still has post work to do, ADR sessions yes, and yes, stuff. Yes, so. no, still haven't finished yet. Yes, so <laughs> it, it ends up being, I mean, for us, a very long season. Every, every year mm -hmm. is kind of a continuation. But we love it, and it's so much fun. Well, we just had the the sort of uh, teaser trailer released, mm -hmm. and you know, always that moment when something is finally out there. Yeah, it's so rewarding <laughs> to see the fans and see everyone in anticipation. And for you, mm -hmm. this is finally <laughs> there. I mean, how do you feel? Are you? I mean, when you first start writing a book, as well, you must. You obviously know where you're going with it, but you know, when you get to the end, you know, are you satisfied and you're excited or, or are you sort of, is there a relief to finish it? I don't know. Mm. I mean, yeah, well, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. No, it's tremendously exciting, especially in the last few weeks where just, I know everything about this book and it's just how, how long can I stay awake, you know, before I fall, fall over into my keyboard. And uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's very very exciting, and luckily not nearly as painful as giving birth. So, but um, you know, it goes on a lot longer. <laughs> you get tired. Uh, no, it's uh, very ecstatic. But you know, it's always very peaceful. For some reason, I always finish books at at daybreak. You know, on the last yeah. day, mm. so to speak. Yeah, and, she normally writes at nighttime. Yeah, I normally right? write at nighttime, but yeah. I'll go down to bed at uh, four thirty or so. Work between midnight and four thirty. And so normally I would have been in bed, but I'm so close to the end, yeah. <laughs> I just have to do this. And so it's always daybreak, and so I turn off my computer and walk down as the sun is dawning. <laughs> mm. As my husband in the kitchen <laughs> says, oh, are you done? And I said, yes, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so what happens after? Like, do, now you've finished it, you know, do you still have that routine? Are oh you my God, yeah. sort of itching, mm -hmm. itchy fingers? Diana never stops writing. No. Well, this is basically true, is what I'm writing. But uh, yeah, I have just begun work on book 10. Because, yeah, it does. Uh, it no, goes. sooner have you finished this one, you're on to the next. Wow. Well, more or less. Yeah. But I work um, interleaving things. I usually work on more than one project at a time. Scripts, for instance. Yeah. 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 And I have 
do you find, I know you don't necessarily base your characters going forward off of obviously the actor portrayals, but no. do you find anything from the show seeps into these later books? Like I know you've had a character named Hewan, for instance, and um, <laughs> yeah, that is made it that. in. Yeah, yes, has everyone made it that. in. Yeah. But I mean, do, does anything else seep in? And in, in this next book, will we find any fun little, no? Easter eggs. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know. You might. I have this vague recollection of having written something like that. <laughs> oh. hmm. And can we have a tease? I mean, Sam and I, yes, sometimes I get a preview of the book. I have I, not gotten my preview yet. Yeah. So if we have you a little want tease? one, just say the word. Is there oh. teases oh. anything? Is there something we could, fans might can look forward to, hmm. apart from the whole thing? Oh, but. my goodness gracious. Hmm. Well, you know, all of my books have a, an internal sh shape. Yes as I think in geometric terms when I'm putting them together. It's like playing Tetris in my head, but slowly. And uh, anyway, this book is shaped like a snake, which is very interesting. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That sounds devious. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's sort of weird, it? time travel or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Twisty. Mm, yeah, it yeah. might be something like that. And mm -hmm. then again, it might just be plot-wise, <laughs> as we have a number of, pe of people in this book. Um, I don't... I'm not the sort of person who wants to write all about, you know, the romantic young yeah. lovers and then the next book, well, they're now married and boring, so we're going to write about their children, yeah. that sort of thing. So, yeah. in fact, when I started writing this, I said, uh, anybody can write a romance, evidently, because a lot of people do, might have not read any at this point. But uh, I said, I'm not sure that I want to tell just a courtship story. I said, I want to tell the story of how you stay married for 50 years. Mm. But you mm. kind of probably base that on your own life. Well, yes. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Since come February, we'll, we'll have been together for 50 years. That's amazing. So That's amazing. That's oh, incredible. Congrats. It is wow. kind of. We keep looking at each other going, surely not. <laughs> wow. I love that Doug reads your books. I love that Doug oh. kind of weighs in and gives you notes. And he is has, absolutely. Is he yeah. the first person that, that reads them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he's basically the only person until it's done. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, I, he does not get up. He does not work at night. He gets up way early, which is very helpful. Um, so I finish writing something and I'll uh, leave it on his sink when I go to bed. And he'll get it in the morning and take it off to have coffee. And he brings it back to me at noon with marginal notes. Like, this is really good, or nipples again. <laughs> so that is the best note. Is there anything in the previous books that Doug has been, you want to do that Doug said, no, I don't think so. Like, yeah, yeah, occasionally yeah. he will. Yes, I'm, I'm still uh, say no, you, you can't sell this character short this way. Mm. You've got to let him play it out. You know, to, you can't just dispose of him. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have, or do you have favorites, or is, is it? Everyone's like your ch children, you know. There's, I'm not talking about characters, <laughs> though you can say. But um, but actually, the actual books, like, are there any ones you enjoyed writing more than us, or more, I don't know, rewarding or mm. challenging? Or were there certain mm. books, or I guess everyone is different, right? Well, they are, yeah. But uh, for me, you know, characters are either onions, um, mushrooms, or hard nuts. The onions are the ones who, who I know immediately, I know exactly who they are. But as the more you work with them, they get these rounded layers and achieve more pungency and, mm. and globularity. Yeah, anyway, Jamie is an onion, definitely, and so is Claire. Good. Good. Yes, he has layers. Uh, yeah, very, layers, very, lots of yes, layers, yes, very, very pungent many. layers. Yeah. Yes. Um, pungent layers. <laughs> yes. The choice of words is always <laughs> exceptional. Exactly, yes. Um, let's see, who's a mushroom? Oh, uh, Master Raymond, I Master think. Master Raymond is a mushroom, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have listened to your past conversations. Oh, I've well, done yeah. my homework. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, yeah. exactly. And Lord John is probably my most successful mushroom. Mm. These are people who you weren't planning on having. You, know, you just wrote them in for some very transitory purpose, but they popped right up and took off with the scene. Mm -hmm. And they did it the next time you met them. You're thinking, okay, so that's who you are. Mm. So these people, I don't have to think about them at all. It's just which situation you encounter them in. They will immediately adapt to it and start taking it off. And one point in Bees, which I can probably tell you is not a spoiler because it's part of the Revolutionary War, but uh, during a particular siege where Brianna is in the city with the British who are being besieged and uh, the Americans are doing the besieging, Lord John comes by to, uh, to see to her welfare. Mm -hmm. And he gives her a, an American flag, which his brother took off a prisoner, he says. And he says, you know, if by chance they do get in, and I don't think they will, but if they do, hang this flag, you know, out of your window or we'll put it over your right. door. And, uh, and she says, all right. And she looks you know, apprehensive, naturally enough. And he turns around and he says, don't worry, my dear. We are His Majesty's Army. We know how to do this. 
and they do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, so sometimes you get to see the British Army do their stuff, and yeah. sometimes you get to see uh, Jamie's militia <laughs> in, yeah. in all of its uh, various iterations. Because you don't just build a militia out of you know uh, spare parts or dragon's yeah. teeth. Mm -hmm. You got to accumulate one, which means politics and judgment and mm -hmm. how am I going to buy enough rifles to support these guys? And mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have enough whiskey to sell to do that. We're going to have to steal some horses here, that sort of thing. It's amazing how you tied in all the historical stuff. Because yeah. I find like yeah. even during the show, you know, it's it's a bit of an education yeah. as well. But, <laughs> but you, there's a great it's a great balance between you know the historical accuracy, but also yeah. the the the. The fiction side of it. Yeah, the yeah. dramatizing of it. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks a lot, yeah. Well, um, what a story is, is a character, and it's got to be, you know, a particular character, um, you know, a rounded, <laughs> pungent one, that you can, you know, explore their, their personality. But the next thing you need is a situation. You want to find the situation in which this character finds him or herself, or themselves, as the case may be. And uh, the question then is, here is this person in this situation, and then what happens? And you just keep moving this along. Every time you stop, you say, and then what happened? Well, if nothing is happening, obviously you need to go to a new place or switch your point of view to a different character. But this is what it always is, because the essence of a story is conflict. And uh, I've got to say, for setting <laughs> a book in a time of conflict, uh, the 18th century was the place to be. It was just one thing after another. Yeah. Do you ever find you, as you're writing ahead, you realize you've not made a mistake, but you've done something that you kind of wish you hadn't and mm -hmm. you want to undo you it. You might do better. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I mean, back in book three, for instance, you set mm -hmm. up something that now, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, occasionally, uh, not very often. You know, this is putting aside questions of wokeness or political correctness in which people yeah. misinterpret the past to suit themselves. And now we don't do that. Uh, but yeah, occasionally there are places where I just didn't have the resources to do what I was doing well. So I did it to the best of my ability yeah. at the mm. time. Uh, this would be the Mohawk in particular, mm -hmm. the language and the culture and so forth, Thank in you. that, you know, I did have research materials, I you know, did it yeah. <laughs> as well as I could tell. Well, uh, coming into this book, the last thing that I do is plug in the foreign languages, or the non-English. Yeah, so we've got French, Gaelic, and in this instance, Mohawk. Yeah. Mm. And I, for the last book, all I had for the Mohawk language was a book called 1,000 Words in Mohawk. Right, right. <laughs> so I did the best we could with that. Well, I was fortunate in this case to get an email from a, a, a Mohawk elder, an 82-year-old Red Power activist, who uh, took issue with some of the Mohawk in the show. And I wrote back very politely and said, well, you know, we do our absolute yeah. best. We do have, you know, a Mohawk consultant yeah. and yeah. things like this. And, uh, you know, it's a, culture is a moving target. Mm. And also culture depends quite a bit on your perspective and where you are at said culture. I said, but, you know, there's also limited room in a show to explain things. You have yeah. to do things in visual. Mm -hmm. And I said, but since you're talking to me, I would really like you to tell me in detail yeah. about uh, Mohawk customs and mm -hmm. language. Yeah. And if you can tell me how to say swiftest of lizards in Mohawk, I'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, you kind of had the same on that show, though. You know, I mean, I think, you know, we, we obviously with the, the Native American side, I mean, we, Matt and yourselves yeah. went, you know, really mm -hmm. um, deep into sort of the research. But even with the Gaelic, I mean, it, it can vary yeah. so much yeah. the yes. pronunciations mm -hmm. and, and where what part of the country you're at. And Absolutely. People have different yeah. um, mm -hmm. uh, different customs, and I mm -hmm. think it just it can really vary from, mm -hmm. from yeah. I guess clan to clan or or, mm -hmm. or tribe <laughs> to tribe. Yeah, yeah, they have their yeah. very own traditions that are sometimes completely opposite to the yeah. overall culture. Yeah. And that's true. The, this is the bottom line, essentially, is that you are dealing with a very limited set of cultural circumstances, that the set your main character finds him or herself in. They may be strange circumstances, in which case you have the excuse of, you know, a fish out of water. You get to tour around and see everything that this person doesn't know, and thus to explain it to your readers. But if it is one that's well known to him, then you have to show just his customs and traditions without making it seem as though you are explaining, you know, they just have to be part of him. And so, you know, it's underplayed, mm. uh, so to speak. And uh, the way you do that is, you know, by you know, minor repetition or what I call underpainting, which is to weave the physical aspects of the scene underneath the dialogue. In other words, it's pretty much what you do when acting. In other words, the dialogue is spoken, but right. it's what you're doing underneath that is actually going to make that work. Mm. Uh, and you, you can do pretty much the same thing in text. It's just a matter of craft. Mm. 
Yeah. Sam and I are going to go run out right now and write a book. Well, you've already written a book. So. <laughs> well, we, we, we're a nice segue there, book. but we are actually book birthdays. My, we are. My amazed, second book yeah. is out, Clanland's Almanac, the same day as yours. Excellent. Um, yeah. So I guess mm -hmm. they can read that uh, after Tomorrow. they finished yours, <laughs> um, which I would suggest everyone goes out and reads. Um, but <laughs> yeah, how big is this one? Shorter. How big? Because this is, this is something that always, I oh, find yes. your, your books get bigger and bigger. Like, is this the yeah. biggest or? <laughs> uh, no, it's not quite. Um, see, to the best of my knowledge, which is not perfect, it's 440,000 words about, okay, oh which is yeah, substantial. But Breath of Snow and Ashes and Fiery Cross yes. were each 508,000. Are you still going to stop at 10? Well, it depends on Jamie and Claire. If they're yeah. not ready to die yet, then I guess I'll have to go ah. on. Oh, ah. so that means Claire's alive! That was a slip. Well, but it's time travel. You never <laughs> know. Time travel, okay. yeah. You can never tell. <laughs> Mm. Yes, that's the other thing is that I do write novellas that fill in blanks yeah. in the series, so I can always go out and come back again, and again by a different door, so to speak. And then you have the audiobook as well, right? Yeah. Yes, Nina so that... Porter, I love her. Yeah, so she's lovely. Yeah, she is recording even as we speak, and yeah, it will be well. out uh, at the same time as the hardcover. Right. All the editions, hardcover, ebook, etc., and cool. Audible come out at the same time, mm. ideally. Great. <laughs> Maybe Thank Sam can narrate. Your tenth book. I would. I mean, I would love to do that, Dana. I just did our audio book myself, yes. and it took us three days to do. So I imagine yours would take a, a sizable amount of time. I'm not it's sure I have weeks, it in me. I think. Yeah. Well, eight I weeks. Know. About that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's much less time than I would actually imagine. Because yeah, especially estimate. if you're playing every character, character I'm yes, actually exactly. fascinated by mm -hmm. how she do, does her yes, job. But that's, that's another mm. conversation yes. entirely. Uh -huh. Yes, well, I don't know. You may be actually in the running to do that. Davina told me <gasps> some oh. years ago. That, uh, <laughs> no, Breaking news. <laughs> well, no. She told me some years ago that she would be happy to read my next book, provided I finish it by her 75th birthday, because that's when she planned to retire. And as it is, I believe she's slightly past her 75th birthday, so we consider it a, a, uh, a esteemed favor and work of love. Mm. And we're looking forward to it with great attention. But depending on how long it takes me to write the next one, as I say, you may well be in the running. Well, I'm always here, <laughs> and uh, but hopefully Davina will do it, because it's great to have that continuity. Yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I'm so excited. I'm sure everyone else mm -hmm. is really excited to, to yeah. read it, finally. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy. I know. Yeah. I want an early copy, actually. I want a signed copy. <laughs> <laughs>